What's going on y'all? It's your boy Beasley. I hope you guys are all staying positive, motivated, and cool out there. I'm coming at you guys today with a review of Season 5, Episode 2 of the Potomac Housewives. I must say, there was like a little confusion with this episode with me. Like, I watched the first episode last week and then I fell asleep and then I woke up to hearing Karen's like sexual moans. So I was like, I thought it was a teaser trailer, but come to find out, like I looked at my Hulu and it said, oh, you just viewed episode two. And I'm just like, episode two. So I think Bravo kind of like leaked the second episode on accident and they just went ahead and just ran it again this Sunday like we didn't know, but it is what it is. So let's go ahead and get into the review, y'all. So starting off in this episode, we hear Karen, like I said, having these sexual moans. Like they wanted to give the illusion of Uncle Ray like breaking her back out. We know damn well like his geriatric ass was not the one doing that. We see her working out with, um, I think this is Mr. Blue Eyes, like the person that they alleged that she was cheating on Uncle Ray with, Uncle Jessup, whatever, whatever his name is. It's, the, I, this show has been gone so long that I have forgotten like most of the husbands' names. Like I can't get on track with their names for some reason, but I'm gonna get it together, y'all. So at the end of the workout, uh, Karen's like, you know, I just keep my body right for you, even though you have a hard time saying those three letter words. And he was like, what words? And she's like, I love you. Like, and this is mainly their storyline. Like them two are kind of like falling out of love basically because. It feels almost scripted to me, but in the teaser trailer, we do see, like, them two going off, so it's really going to depend on, like, how that plays out or if them two are just great actors because I see their Instagram. Karen is the only one that I follow from this show, and them two are kind of, like, lovey-dovey on their Instagram, so it's kind of, like, hard to picture them having issues now in the show when, in reality, it's already worked out, but... Mr. Ray reveals that like he just sits there like she's just having a hard time like getting through to him like he's really not taking well to basically her having this newfound power and basically at the sheer fact that Karen doesn't really need him anymore like let's be real like Karen for all intents and purposes she kind of like found herself late in life and she's basically like really living through the fruits of her labor and really like seeing that she could go out and make it on her own and Mr. Ray is having a hard time with that like he's having a hard it's like the power struggle he doesn't really have power over her anymore that's exactly what it is and when he's feeling losing that power like his heart's going to go ahead and stray like a lot of men do so we see Giselle Monique they're meeting up to my surprise again and they basically want to bury the hatchet with each other. Like, Monique reveals, like, she's like, I'm not going to lie to you, Giselle. Like, every time, like, your name would come up, I just thought nothing but the worst about you. And, I mean, that's kind of easy to do, really, when you are speaking about somebody like the lizard lady, Giselle. Now, I try to give every lady a clean slate when I um, look at these shows every single season. But... For the most part, I don't like Giselle, y'all. Like, I feel like she is one of those shady church ladies that are all cool when the ceremony's going on, but at the end, she's gossiping like a cackling hen. Like, Giselle just gives me, like, like the mean girl bossy, a.k.a. in college. Like, that's what she is, and she never really grew out of that childish, like, mean girl mindset. Like, that is carried over into her 50s or however old she is. But... They also, um, in Monique's confessional, like, we already see seeds planted of everybody literally saying that Giselle is only likable when a man is in her life. And that goes back to her three daughters saying that last season, like, those girls have a strong intuition because they were the first ones on the show that said that, like, you're only nice whenever you have a boyfriend, mommy. And it's just like... Now you see every single girl saying that this episode, and it's just like, that's kind of embarrassing, Giselle. Like, the fact that you're only a likable person when a man's in your life, but whatever. Everybody has their vices, I guess. So, they both put their issues aside, and then they reveal that they want to throw a party for Ashley. Ashley, she's been posting videos on the Instagram. She's kind of, like, subtly dealing with postpartum. Like, she doesn't full out admit that she has it, but she admits that she doesn't feel like herself. And, I mean, you're not yourself. After you have a baby, you... I feel like that's a time for women where they kind of shed skin and shed, like, their 20s and all their old and not-so-good ways, and they kind of, like 
toughen up and become a better mom. At least, at least most women that have children. They then reveal that they want to go ahead and invite Candace to go ahead and apologize to Ashley. They both feel like Candace, once again, doesn't take up for anything that she says or like doesn't, doesn't own up to any like negative thing and how she, um, basically like how she treats the other women in the group. But at the same time, have, do y'all like have amnesia? Like, first of all, Ashley has gotten into it with every single person on this cast. Ashley has came for everybody's neck, especially Monique. And like I said in my last review, like Monique, for some reason, kind of switched up and like didn't want to be on Team Candace and started kissing Ashley's ass so, she, so that she could have kind of like a an alliance. Because at first, Monique and Candace were thick as thieves. And then out of nowhere, that kind of switched once Candace did something that... um. I believe that it was like the whole drag me Monique thing that's going to happen this season. That's what happened while Monique was pregnant. And then ever since then, Monique wasn't really fooling with her. So she just ran to be on Ashley's side, even though Ashley, in my opinion, is not to be trusted either. She's another one. Like her and Giselle, like, I do not like. Like they're just, they're, them two are just fucking horrible human beings, in my opinion. So they, um, let's see. In the confessional, Monique... Um, they question why Candace basically is all of a sudden friends with Sharice. And then Monique reveals again that, like, I just, like, it's just crazy. Like, Sharice said all these rumors about me and my family. And Candace all of a sudden just becomes friends with her. That's just very shady to me. And then the producers once again ask Monique, like, what are the rumors? And then Monique's like, I don't want to talk about it. So then we go over to Messy Giselle, and Giselle spills all the tea. She reveals that basically um, there was a there was a rumor that Sharice told everybody that she saw Monique um, par partying and parlaying around town with her personal trainer, and basically that Monique was cheating on her husband with a personal trainer, which uh, I don't believe. I feel like Monique is truly in love with um, Big Chris. Like I don't think that really happened so but at the same time it's just like I understand Monique doesn't want to bring up that mess but girl that's kind of the reason why Sharice was brought in so that we could usher in this storyline between you and your personal trainer but I, I understand why she doesn't want to bring it up but like you're still bringing it up without telling us what it is so leave it to Giselle's messy ass to reveal it but hey she did her job in that part so I can't even be mad at her so we then get to Ashley. She hires a coach to help her breastfeed. So Candace meets up with Wendy and then Candace talks about not being sure if she wants to go ahead and have kids yet. Like she feels like she's not mentally ready yet. And honestly, I don't think she is either. I feel like Candace needs a little bit of therapy because I feel like not even the fact that her mom was taking care of her. Um, I just feel like mentally Candace is not fully a grown woman yet. Like she's still that little pageant debutante in her late 20s. Um, I, how old is Candace? Candace is like in her early 30s, I think. Like she doesn't look too much older than me. I'm about to be 28 next year, next week actually. Happy birthday to me, y'all. But um, yeah, Candace, she needs to hold off on that baby thing at least another year. And I feel like she and um, Chris actually need couples therapy. We're going to get into that in a little bit. But Candace also talks about... Well, Wendy um, also talks about, like, she doesn't know why Karen, every time they meet up, like, Karen's like, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Basically, like, another version of Mariah Carey's, oh, I don't know her, but yet she's being polite and greeting her. And it's like, girl, like, we've worked on boards together. Like, you know me. Like, what is going on? And then they also talk about Giselle and how she's um, only cool, once again, when her grass is being tended to, a.k.a. when she has a man. Like, they really are driving that home. Like, they're really driving, like, home the fact that Giselle is just not a likable person. Like, I mean, we don't need a rocket science to figure that out, but Giselle is only likable whenever she's getting some D. I mean, hey, everybody has their vices, right? So, Karen and Candace meet up briefly to talk about Ashley, and then basically, like, Candace is like, I don't know how I'm going to react being in front of her. Like, this is, like, the first time they've really seen each other, and the first time they're going to be in the same room since, um, basically since the reunion. Like, them two are just, honestly, them trying to get them to, uh, to apologize, I just don't think it's worth it. Like, it's not going to happen. Like, that's, like, the reoccurring theme with these, um, ensemble cast black reality shows. 
Like anytime somebody falls out, they always try to get each other to apologize just so we could keep a story and a narrative going. But it's just like, in reality, like, if I don't fuck with you, I don't fuck with you. Like, that's it. Like, we don't need, there's no talking after that. Like, I'll try to apologize, but if you can't take it for the first time, then that's it. Like, I'm cool on you. Bye. Like, I don't understand why every single ensemble cast we have to keep on, like, oh, apologize, apologize. Like, ugh, whatever, y'all. So, let's see. Monique calls Ashley before, this is like days before the party. Ashley reveals, like, she doesn't want to leave her baby. Like, she's kind of really, like, she revealed in the last episode, she's kind of scared about, like, what's going to happen. And, like, she's been up in the house the whole entire time with the baby. And she just doesn't know how to, like, basically cut the umbilical cord, like, really. And then Monique reveals to Ashley that her and Giselle are on good terms. And that's to Ashley's surprise. And for a little second, it seemed like them three were going to like form an alliance for the rest of the season. Especially at the end of this episode, it felt like Giselle, Ashley, and Monique were like going to just team up and like come back against Candace because they think that Candace brought Sharice around for ill intentions. Which I'm kind of iffy on that, but we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. So then they talk about uh, Wendy, who is a new mom. Monique reveals that she's cool. Like, you two are going to get along and hit it out the park. Like, she's a new mom. I'm a new mom. And, hey, we can all do the damn thing. And then Monique reveals that she also invited Candace. And then Ashley, she's not really feeling that. But she's just going to go regardless. Because I think in her heart and hers, like, she need, they do need to talk. Like, they're going to end up having to talk at some point. So it's just like, might as well get it over with. So in this next scene, we see Juan and his fine ass. He meets up with Giselle. And at first, Giselle's kind of confused. Like, why are we meeting up? Like, does Robin know? And he's like, no, she doesn't know. But then he reveals, like, I want to get married to her. Again. And then she, Giselle's actually very happy. She's like, yes, like, you two, honestly, even though you guys have been through some tough times, you two belong together. And I honestly feel like Robin and Juan belong together. Like, for some reason, even though he wasn't really checking for her at all that first season or, or the first or second season, like, them two really, I feel like them two were meant to be together. I don't know why. I don't know what it is about them two, but, like, the chemistry is there, even though they're both kind of dry as a box of rocks. Them two have chemistry. So Giselle suggests also that he should get a ring that's um, twice the price of Robin's first ring. And I'm just like, that's all cute, cool and cute and dandy. But like, it, it, can one afford that? Like, I mean, not to count anybody's pockets, but like, let's be real, y'all. Like, them two are low-key struggling on this show. So Juan then talks about how Jamal being back is a good influence to Giselle's daughters. And then Giselle kind of reveals like, mm, to an extent, yes, but at the same time, like my daughters aren't really feeling him because once again, those girls have a strong intuition and they knew like what type of man Jamal, the false pro prophet Bryant is like. They know the, like the fuckery he was up to back in the day and how they hurt their mom and they are just very they're just really waiting on the day that he does it again like they just got it's like they got one eye on his ass basically like they're just not they're not used to them two being together and they're just waiting for the day that he disappoints her again and I can't really blame them like the, if you heard all the stories about Jamal Bryant and what he did to Giselle, like, it was just the utmost disrespect, which further makes me believe that this is still all for a storyline. So, we go on to Candace, and she's at home. And she um, just flushed the toilet, and she reveals to Chris, who's making breakfast, that she took a pregnancy test. And the pregnancy test came out negative, so she's not pregnant. And she honestly feels like part of her was disappointed like part of her was like wow like if that was if I was going to be pregnant in that moment like I would have just kept the baby like I would have like we would have just been a pregnant couple now and Candace um at first Chris comes off as like he doesn't really like he feels like they're like veering off of their plan and he's not really here for it but then he switches up and says like whatever happens happens like I'm ready like we're just waiting on you and I can see that. Like, honestly, Candace needs therapy. 
them two need need couples therapy because I feel like when them two get out of the honeymoon phase and they don't address the issues head on, there's going to be major issues and it's going to be a bumpy road in the in the beginning of their marriage, in my opinion. So then, um, also Chris um, reveals that he wonders why, like. He he basically says like I knew you weren't pregnant because we haven't been having sex like that, and then we see flashbacks of um, Candace saying like oh like our, our sex it's a it's a decent time, and then like Chris reveals that he actually caught a fence to that he's like my sex is awesome it's great it's this and she's like it's all of that, and I feel like she was lying like honestly, women know, like if your if your dick game is good a woman is going to praise you and like gas you up anytime that she gets like a woman is going to tell you that your dick is good so I really don't Candace had to save face a little bit there like but she she didn't want to hurt that ego of Chris but honestly like her reaction to what he said told it all in my opinion so Giselle and Candace arrive at this infamous dinner for Ashley now y'all <laughs> Giselle, what does she have on, y'all? Like, I know a lot of women are getting tired of men critiquing women's fashions, but I've actually worked in fashion. I know fashion and I love fashion. I mean, I, just because I look a mess on this camera, I was a stylist before I went to corporate America. Like, I know how to dress and I know how to dress other people. Giselle is probably one of the worst dressed housewives of all time and I'm not even bullshitting when I say that. She had on this um, purple and gold sweater like it was like a sweater dress with like some gold cufflinks. Some short like legging type Bermuda shorts that kept on riding up her legs. She had on this like lime green eyeshadow with these big like chunky ugly gaudy black hoop earrings and I was just like Giselle, where are you? Where are you going? Like, what, like, what is this? What is this ensemble? And like, whether we critique your fashion or not, y'all, like, sixty percent of um, the housewife shows are watched for the fashion. And I feel like Potomac overall is the worst dress. Like, granted, we have people that can dress nice. Like, I feel like Monique dresses good, and so does Karen. And Wendy has been looking good too so far. But I. Uh, uh, Giselle is just a travesty in the dressing department. Like, she is just too pretty to be looking the way that she does. Like, she looks a fucking hot-ass mess. Like, this is season five. Like, what are we doing, Giselle? Like, I like let me get off of her, but I'm just like... Giselle is pretty, but she's also just a big read in herself at the same time. So, Giselle being messy tells Monique that Ashley knows why Candace befriended Sharice. And basically, like, Ashley's going to have to tell her whenever she gets there. And then um, Cand Monique in her confessional reveals that like it really bothers her that she brought Sharice around. Like, why are you, you know I have beef with this girl and you just bring her around just to start some issues and some mess with me. So Karen and Ashley then arrive. They talk about Candace a little bit and then Candace pops up out of nowhere. So then Wendy and Ashley bond over having babies and Wendy also reveals that she is just like, she is on her last baby. Like after this third one, like this is it. Ashley then reveals that she's also having a sipping, a sip and see, kind of like a callback to Phaedra, Phaedra Parks from the Rousewives of Atlanta, and that all the girls are going to be invited to it. She also reveals that she tore her asshole while she was giving birth, and I'm just like, like, do we really, <laughs> like, do we really need to know that? Like, uh, girl, y'all had dinner. Like, they, they didn't even start eating, and that was the first story that she told. So then um, Ashley then asks uh, how the Diamond and Denim party was. And then at first, Candace is quiet. And then Monique was like, man, the whole time I was dodging a walrus. So I'm just like, this is, this is. when I tell you, I hollered when I heard that. I was like, okay. So Candace reveals that she didn't even um, know the extent to Monique and Sharice's beef. Which... In my opinion, I don't really know which way, in my opinion. Like, I don't know where... Part of me feels like Candace would have had to know something. Like, you just became friends with Sharice out of nowhere. Like, you weren't cool with Sharice like that. 
like at all. Like I feel like them two were always like acquaintances. Like them two never really hung out. Like 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 I just feel like there is some shadiness there, but I feel like Maybe Candace didn't know the rumors about Monique, about her allegedly cheating on her husband. So, I, I just feel like that is just going to have to be revealed over time. So, you know, we're only in the second episode, so we're going to get more information later. So, Monique nicely reads Candace and basically says, like, oh, so how was y'all's um, honeymoon? Did y'all go on a honeymoon? Like, you really, if you didn't, you should have took that money from that party and went on a honeymoon. Have lots of sex. And then, um... Candace or somebody reveals that Candace is still sleeping with um Chris while using condoms and then Wendy's like y'all still using condoms like girl what are you doing like you need to consummate that marriage like y'all need to give it up like what's going on and then um Monique and Giselle then harp on Candace once again and then they try to get her to basically apologize to Ashley and at this point it feels like everybody just really ganging up on Candace and then Monique I mean Candace basically tells Ashley like I just feel like we need to get to a better place of respect and I feel like I want to talk to you but it needs to be done on a different day separate away from all these women. And then Ashley's like, well, basically we can talk whenever you take accountability for your actions and the things that you did and everything and the mean hurtful things that you said. But I'm just like, Ashley, at the same time, you've never taken accountability for shit. Like, in the past, like, Ashley was the absolute worst. Like, she was the bone collector. She was, like, spraying everybody's business. She was on Karen tough. And then on top of that, she was, like, on Candace really tough as well. Like, even though Candace got on Ashley, Candace got on Ashley because I feel like last season was supposed to be Ashley's turn in the hot seat, and she kind of skate and skirted around the hot seat. Like, she... Somehow, everybody just ended up being on Ashley's side out of nowhere, and it made no sense to me, because Ashley has gotten into it with every single one of these girls, and has never really taken accountability for her actions. So that's why I just can't really vibe with Ashley like that. And I also don't like her husband either, so I, I'm just really not Team Ashley at all. And I half like Candace, but... I would take Candace before I would take Ashley. So they then, like I said, they turn the gain up on, um, they turn and back Candace into a, like a fucking brick wall. And then Candace is just like, she backs back like, it was this party meant for like Ashley or was this like just for y'all to gang up on me? Like what the fuck is going on? And then Giselle's like, basically like, you just need to own up to your, uh, you need to own up to your mess. Like you need to apologize. And like just and then Candace tells Giselle, like, girl, shut the fuck up. Like, fuck all of y'all. And then the episode goes off. I, I will say they are getting it started, y'all. They like this is only episode two, and I've gave this episode a 9.5 out of 10. I feel like it was a great way to really kick this season off. Like, these girls, I don't know what it is, but they I like them better, almost better than Atlanta. Maybe because they're a lot more fresh. And I feel like they kind of found their groove a little bit better than Atlanta. Atlanta, in my opinion, kind of lost its groove along the way. Whereas Potomac, like, it, Potomac is like, like, borderline, like, hood dynasty with class. Like, it's like that good, like, soap opera good, in my opinion. And I cannot wait to the next episode and just basically how the season plays out. Like, we've been hearing about it all time. And now it's time to really see everything come to fruition. So that's my review on the Potomac Housewives. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will come at you guys with some more content.